Hey guys, so I've been looking through all of my videos and the video views and clearly my video that has gotten the most views by far is my YA bookshelf tour video. So I figured I'd do another one of those um, because book people are cool people and I am a book people. Clearly. Clearly I'm a book people. I'm a book person and so I do want to do a lot more book videos on here. So, uh, today I'm going to do a bookshelf tour of my two adult bookshelves because I actually just went out and bought another bookshelf because I had a lot of stuff crammed in and now I've organized everything and it's perfect except if I buy like five more books everything will be chaos again and that'll be bad but uh but that's okay um so I'm gonna show you those and yeah let's do it all right all right guys so here's the shelf it's very pretty so this first shelf and a half is all nonfiction. first I'm calling this oops, I'm calling this kind of the memoir essay section because they're not straight narrative memoirs they're told in like short essay forms and um Actually, all of these are humorous as well. Um, my boyfriend wrote a book about me. I haven't gotten to read that yet, but that sounds awesome. Way to rant. These are my Tucker Max books. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I love Tucker Max. I think he's absolutely hilarious, and he's really smart, and that's why he can get away with doing all the dumb shit he does. Uh, my Horizontal Life, a collection of one-night stands by Chelsea Handler. I... I think that's brilliant. Uh, and when I organized these, I actually realized that I used to have Are You There, Vodka? It's Me, Chelsea, but someone must have borrowed it because I don't have it anymore. I lose a lot of books that way. Uh, and then this is my Lori Notaro section. Um, I've been reading her for a long time. She's very funny. Uh, the Idiot Girls Action Adventure Club. I Love Everybody and Other Atrocious Lies. We Thought You'd Be Prettier. She's very funny. Then we get into more sort of straight memoir. We've got two of Kevin Smith's books. I love Kevin Smith. I love his movies. I love his stand-up comedy. I love him. I just love him talking. He's brilliant. And then these are really, really great. This is Rob Sheffield. Love is a mixtape. And talking to girls about Duran Duran. So these are memoirs, but he kind of uses music to, like, as a way of relating stuff that was happening in his life at that time. Uh, so we got On the Road in here. The Other West Moore. I haven't read this one yet, but I really want to. My best friend is a Wookiee. <laughs> um, that sounds awesome. Then we move into sort of pop culture. These are pop culture essays. Chuck Klosterman. I love him. Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. Um, has an essay about John Cusack and how John Cusack ruined regular guys' chances with women, which is really funny. Uh, Killing Yourself to Live. He's great. We've got Stranger Than Fiction by Chuck Palahniuk. Then I've got Don't You Forget About Me, about The Breakfast Club, and You Couldn't Ignore Me If You Tried, which is actually The Brat Pack, John Hughes, and Their Impact on a Generation, so all of those 80s movies. Um, this is a great cover, and I haven't read this yet, but I really want to. Uh, this is more history. We've got In Cold Blood, Ravens, and then Columbine by Dave Cullen. This book it blew my mind. Um, it's so sad. Uh, little section I don't really know what to do with. Generation Slut. When Will Jesus Bring the Pork Chops by George Carlin. He's one of my favorite comedians. Um, everything I needed to know about being a girl I learned from Judy Bloom. That's awesome. Uh, Neil Cassidy's Letters. Please Kill Me, an oral history of the punk movement, which actually one of my friends borrowed and ripped the back cover off by accident and sort of taped it back together, though it's coming apart again, and he told me that it was more punk rock that way, so that was kind of smart of him. Uh, this right here is books on writing. Um, there's nothing really too interesting to talk about there. Then we move on to the poetry section, which is mostly Charles Bukowski. I love Bukowski. Um, I've never read his novels, but I love his poetry. Uh, this collection is called What Matters Most is How Well You Walk Through the Fire. And um, it's actually like a line from one of his poems. And it's a great poem. And in the musical episode of Buffy, Walk Through the Fire is one of the songs at the end that um, I really kind of connect with. So I have this entire line, What Matters Most is How Well You Walk Through the Fire, as a tattoo on the back of my calf. It's probably my favorite tattoo. Uh, yeah. Let's move on. Um, we got some more poetry here. And then we've got like kind of short story collections. Happily Ever After. I have not read this yet. It's 
fairy tale retellings, but the cover is gorgeous and I had to get it. Hopefully I'll get around to that. Um, Natty Fairy Tales from A to Z. <laughs> Don't judge me. We've got James Franco's story collection, which also I haven't read. It's called Palo Alto. I bought it, honestly, because it's James Franco, so hopefully I get around to that. Uh, this isn't really short stories, but this is also just a strange format. It's The Lover's Dictionary by David Levithan. I love him. And then we've got some favorites, because I just needed to fill in the shelf. Uh, almost like being in love. The girl she used to be. Pretty cover. Uh, the Abstinence Teacher by Tom Perota was amazing. And then I've got Chronicles of Narnia here, which maybe should go on my young adult shelf, but it seems more, like, big and authoritative, and I just put it there. I've actually only read the first four, I believe, of those, but I'll finish that someday. Alright, moving on down here, we've got a little doggy uh, candle holder. I actually don't use candles like that at all, but he was so cute. Um, a wooden turtle. I love turtles. Uh, that one of my friends got me. I believe this is from Africa. And then my best friend from high school licking my Freddy Krueger doll because we're cool like that. And a stingray I got at the zoo. He, look at his sad eyes. He's like a little emo stingray. Alright, so this shelf, um, I'm considering two of my favorite authors shelf, <laughs> uh, which I'm judging that based on the fact that I own so many books by them. So this is Janet Ivanovich. And it's mostly her Stephanie Plum series, which if you haven't read, oh my goodness, it is so funny. It's about a female bounty hunter who kind of just gets thrown into the job because she needs the money, and she's pretty incompetent at it, but she kind of gets lucky all the time and ends up catching the bad guy in the end, but uh, usually she almost gets killed in the process. It's really funny. Um, and I call them the numbers, the numbered books, the number series. The first one I don't have. The first one is called One for the Money. And somebody borrowed it, didn't give it back. I've actually bought that book about three or four times. Always people borrow it and never bring it back. But I'll have to buy it again because I need my collection to be complete. So there's supposed to be one for the money, two for the dough, three to get deadly, four to score, and so on. All the way up to right here. The 19th book just came out this week and I already read it right away. Right now my mom's reading it. Um, these are kind of like tag-alongs to that series. They're not numbered, but they go in the same, they're the same characters. And then she's got a couple other books, um, and I actually haven't read these, but I put a couple of her other ones up there, too. And then this is Jennifer Crusey, uh, probably one of the only romance writers that I enjoy a lot. Um, I started reading her in high school. I actually haven't read any recently, but they're pretty funny. And they're also, um, some of them have some sort of mystery element. Welcome to, Welcome to Temptation was one of the first ones I read. That's really good. Um, move on down here. Two more favorite authors. This is Nicholas Sparks. Uh, yeah. Now, these ones here, I read A Walk to Remember a long time ago, and then these are newer ones. The Last Song, The Lucky One, The Choice, and Dear John, um, which have all been made into movies except for The Choice, I think. But these have more of younger protagonists, and I really just related a lot to these books, and I, I just fell in love with them. And then we've got Jodi Picoult here, who is amazing. If there was one adult writer whose style I could kind of just steal, it would be her. Uh, she tells her stories from kind of every single character's point of view. She jumps in and out of people's heads and kind of gives you, she tells these really complex stories and gives you every side by doing that, and it's not annoying, it's not confusing, it's brilliant. Um, my favorites are The Pact here, which is the first one I bought and does not match these, but oh well. And then 19 Minutes, which is also a school shooting story, but these two books, two of the best books I have ever, ever read in my life. They are amazing. And then another amazing author, Laura Kashish. If you saw my young adult bookshelf video, um, I talked about her because she writes young adult and adult and poetry. So this is The Raising, which is a gorgeous cover. And The Life Before Her Eyes, which was turned into a movie with Evan Rachel Wood and Uma Thurman. And actually, it was one of the few times where I thought the movie was better than the book. I mean, the book was amazing, but it kind of lent itself well to this, like, gorgeously filmed... Um, interestingly directed, like, it it just lent itself to be one of those really cool movies that makes you think, and it's not just, like, it's not straightforward. Um, so there's that. Then we've got Chad Culkin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. He reminds me of 
Tucker Max. Basically what Tucker Max does with true stories, Chad does with fiction. Um, it's very raunchy, guy humor. Uh, the Average American Male was his first one. I believe on the very first page, a guy's talking about anal sex. So that's the kind of thing it is. Um, and then Men, Women, and Children is his newest one. Actually just came out this year. Um, I don't know. He just tells honest honest stories, like stuff that other people wouldn't, wouldn't want to say. Um, this book opens up with a dad s running home on his lunch break to look at porn on his computer because it's the only time he can, but his computer gets a virus because he looks at too much porn, so he actually resorts to going in his son's room and using his son's computer to look at porn, and that's just, that's sad and also funny, and I just, I love Chad. And then The Lie, um, this one, like, there's still sex and stuff like that, but this story was so, so good, and it was basically about three college students, two guys and one girl, who just sort of completely screw each other over and try to ruin each other's lives, but, like, they have their reasons. It's not on purpose at first, um, and so it's just a really good, like, psychological mess. <laughs> um, everybody in this book is a mess, but I think that's a very, it's a very honest story. I would definitely recommend this one to anybody, uh, but you kind of have to be very, very hard to offend if you want to read these two, <laughs> so there's that. Um, got Gregory Maguire, Wicked and Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister, Anne Brashares, which I never know if that's how you say her name, but who wrote The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, these are her adult novels, The Last Summer of You and Me, and My Name is Memory, which was brilliant. This is The Child Thief by Brom. If you look at the cover, um... This is actually supposed to be Peter Pan. It's a retelling of Peter Pan. But for some reason, he reminds me of Dracula. And just with the name Brom, I think of Brom Stroker. Um, I haven't really looked this guy up, but it's one name. It's just Brom. <laughs> uh, so it just sort of gives me this Dracula vibe, and it's really creepy. But it's a very, very, very dark retelling of Peter Pan that basically makes Peter Pan a kidnapper. And he kind of... All of the kids, all of the lost boys, sort of have to fight each other. Fight to the death. Um, it's basically the Hunger Games before the Hunger Games came out very, very, very twisted and dark and violent, uh, but I loved it. <laughs> In case you can't tell, I might be a little bit twisted and dark. Uh, we've got Cum Laude, which is by the woman who wrote Gossip Girl. I've never read the Gossip Girl series, but this is about a college freshman, and this was really good. We've got Stephen King. Um, my dad actually borrowed my favorite Stephen King book, which is Under the Dome, but it's over a thousand pages, and my dad's a really slow reader, so I don't think I'm ever getting that back. Uh, and then we've got just some favorites. Um... The Summer of Naked Swim Parties was really, really good. Girls in Trucks by Katie Crouch, I loved it. And then Men and Dogs, I haven't read yet. She also just started a young adult series. I believe it's called The Magnolia League. But it's sort of a fantasy, so I'm not really interested. Uh, Laura Moriarty, The Center of Everything and While I'm Falling. Got some Francine prose. Wally Lamb, She's Come and Done. I read that in high school. That was great. Uh, Nick Hornby, How to Be Single. Uh, Straight Man by Richard Russo, How I Paid for College, it's funny. Uh, Donna Tartt was recommended to me by my favorite English professor. Uh, really, he was just really hot, and I would just listen to anything he said. <laughs> um, okay, and then we move down to the bottom shelf, which is sort of the books I'm embarrassed of. Uh, first we've got my V.C. Andrews books, which I have, you know, kind of a big collection of. Uh... It actually kind of goes down there, too. And then we've got the Suki Stackhouse series by Charlene Harris, which is what um, True Blood was adapted from. And then this section here, Chicklet and Romance. Uh, so, yeah, kind of embarrassed. I actually, I really don't read it. Just very rarely I feel compelled to buy one because it sounds good, but then I never get around to reading it because I remember, oh yeah, I don't really like Chicklet. Um, the Boy Next Door by Meg Cabot, though. I did read that. That was good. And then we've got Summer Sisters by Judy Bloom. I wouldn't really call that chiclet. That was a really, really good book. And then from here up, it's just kind of straight romance. I wouldn't even call that chiclet. I think this is even, like, it's just, I don't want to say worse, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, Romancing Riley, though, is actually really funny, and California Girl. And this here is, um, what's her name? Vicki Lewis Thompson is a, her, like, nerd series. Talk nerdy to me. It was very funny. The Nerd Who Loved Me, Nerd Gone Wild. And I think she has some more. Basically books with a um, nerdy male love interest. So, there you have it. It looks kind of impressive from down here on the ground. 
Uh, and now we're going to move over to my second adult shelf. Alright, so this is my second adult bookshelf. I uh, just want to point out my Don't Forget to Be Awesome poster that my amazing friend Nicole sent me. Uh, and then we've got this little tiny shelf here. Ignore all of my messy room to the sides. <laughs> Alright, so here is where I put my classics. And I'll admit a lot of these I haven't read, uh, but I kind of buy them whenever I see them used for really cheap. We've got Jane Austen over here, which I actually have read all of her novels, and I think she's brilliant. Then we've got Mark Twain. I've also read, I believe, all of his novels. Not all of his short stories, but I'm pretty sure I've read all of his novels. Um, the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, which I have two copies of. One was from school. Uh, Tom Sawyer. A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. I actually really loved that one. I thought it was hilarious. Put in Ed Wilson, and then I do have like some short stories. We've got The Hobbit. We've got Love Story. Um, a Separate Piece by John Knowles. That is an amazing, amazing book. The Stranger by Albert Camus. Um, I have a quote of his tattooed on the back of my neck. I'm really into the existentialist. Then we've got Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, which is awesome. George Orwell's 1984. Wuthering Heights. I, I, I feel like I enjoyed it more in retrospect than I enjoyed actually reading it, um, if that makes sense. Like, I'm glad that I know this story now, but a little, like, some parts of it were kind of boring. This is The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I don't know how old this is. I think it's not as old as it looks. I think I just had it when I was a kid and kind of trashed it, as I'm doing right now. And then I've got another copy. The Wizard of Oz is my favorite movie ever, but I enjoy the book. Someday I'll read all of them, because there's actually a lot. We've got Alice in Wonderland. Wow, I'm doing pretty good. I've actually read all of these. Um, and then My Antonia, which I love and I have two copies of somehow. Uh, I had to read this in an English class with the professor I just mentioned, my favorite professor. And I just loved him so much, and I wanted to impress him, so I actually like, read all the books and got into it. And this was actually really good. Um, I really loved this. So then I actually just bought every other... This is out of order. So I bought every other Willa Cather book I come across used, um, but I have not read them. Here... Nope, actually, I've read these too. Go me. I've read Jane Eyre. Um, actually, I never made it through Oliver Twist. This is my Shakespeare section. I have read these. Um, I love Shakespeare. The Graduate, uh, Junkie by William Burroughs, Peter Pan, Jude the Obscure. I only made it halfway through. I think my bookmark, yep, bookmark's still in there. Uh, I read this, started this a long time ago and gave up, but I did enjoy it. I just, it was taking me a long time, and I had other things to read. Stepford Wives, Brokeback Mountain... Then Catcher in the Rye and Nine Stories, Anna Karenina, which I've never actually tried to read. Eventually I will, um, because I really do think I might enjoy it. Treasure Island, Kidnapped, The Incredible Journey, To Kill a Mockingbird. Got some Edith Wharton, F. Scott Fitzgerald, This Side of Paradise. I actually don't have The Great Gatsby, which I have read. Uh, Gulliver's Travels, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. And then these here are my Buffy comics, um, season 8. Actually, these are only the first 15. I just ordered the rest of season 8. There's actually 40 of them. And then they made some Spike ones. They're starting a Spike series, so I got those. And then they're already on to season 9 right now. So I'm going to finish season 8, and then I'm going to get those. But these are just so gorgeous. Look at that. That is, They're just gorgeous. Um, I'm not going to take those out, though. And then down here, I just kind of threw some magazines there. Makes me look silly because there's Cosmo on top. Um, but then there's my Writer's Chronicles. So that makes me sound smart, right? Right. Um, these are actually just some more random books that didn't fit on the shelf there. Uh, I don't even think I've read any of those. And then these are just um, books that I bought this semester when I was doing my thesis, books I needed for research. All right, so that is it. There you have it. So there you go, guys. Uh, leave me some comments if you want to talk about any of these books or anything else. And um, I do have one more shelf that I haven't shown you yet, which is my YA shelf of YA books I haven't read. Um, it's a whole, not a shelf, it's a whole bookcase. It's a whole new bookcase that I bought just for my books I haven't read. Um, I would really like if uh, some more people would subscribe to this channel. Um, I know it's not only book stuff, but if you like that kind of stuff, I do, uh, I plan on doing more reviews and 
just more stuff. Um, I'm actually going to go film another uh, book tag right now. So there's that. All right. So thanks, guys. Bye.